So we're in this series that we're calling God's Way Works, you guys. God's Way Works. And, and man, I could, I could probably bring, we could probably spend all day just in this crowd sharing testimonies of that statement, right? How many of you believe they just know you have stories of God's way working in your life? You got tons of stories in your relationships, in your finances, in your ministry, in your career, that as you kind of just apply God's word to your life and his way, man, you see the benefit, you see the fruit, you see the blessing. Can I tell you something? Like God wants to bless you. Do you know that? Like God wants you to walk in his favor in, in, in what Jesus actually calls the, an abundant life. Like he wants you to be blessed. And, and so although it's, it's, you know, we can see God operating his ways kind of being beneficial in our lives in some areas, in other areas, it's harder to apply his ways. And it's just different for every person, but we're kind of targeting one of the ways, one of God's ways that is a challenge for most people to apply to their life. And that's the area of finances. And when it comes to this area of finances, it's just, it's hard because this, the finances, one theologian said that your, your, your finances or your pocketbook your wallet is the last stronghold of every Christian. It's just an area of our life that it's hard to let go of. It's hard to release to the control of, to the control of God and say, okay, God, I'm going to invite your way instead of my way. So the question like we pose every week is, what would that look like then? If, men, you apply God's ways to other areas of your life, why wouldn't it work here? What would it really look like if you invited the word of God and that, that is just so full of principles and wisdom about finances? What would it look like if you invited God's ways into the planning and the decision-making process of your finances? Man, we're, we just believe, we know it, God's way works. You would see it. And what we're discovering here is that, that money management, listen, is spiritual management. It is, it, is, it is not something that is separate from your spiritual life, from your spiritual discipline. Jesus taught that, that money management is a spiritual discipline. And it's something that, that, that we, we need to understand in order to op operate in really the full blessing of God and to walk in the favor. He does want to pour out on you. So these last two weeks, we've actually just been laying the, the groundwork of what does that look like then? What are, what are, what is God's ways? look like and it's very important for you guys if you missed any of these previous two weeks man you got to go check those out because everything what i'm sharing today and how and, and even tomorrow it is predicated upon the, that you understanding and applying these last two weeks so i put it in your handout let me kind of set up this week and i put it, this statement in your handout this way write it down you guys because i must have the foundation of stewardship that was part one that that's the foundation of our financial management, of our financial understanding according to the kingdom of God, that the foundation is stewardship. Remember that, 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 that I don't own a thing, that it's not mine, it's all his. I'm just a steward, a manager, a caretaker of all of God's things. So I must have the foundation of stewardship and the frame of, here was part two, the frame of contentment. That is what holds it together so that, man, that God gives us blessings he gives us actually the bible says he gives us all these things for our own enjoyment but if i don't have the right foundation and the right frame then i can misconstrue the provision of god i can start pursuing the provision instead of the provider and i can get all messed up in my life okay so i need to have the right foundation of stewardship and the frame of contentment in order to fully benefit from and here's what i want to teach you today the fruit of the harvest how many of you know that god wants to bring harvest into your life that he wants to bring a harvest of blessing and a harvest of favor. He wants you to walk in the fruit of the harvest. Today, I want to teach you guys. I want to look at the law of sowing and reaping. A lot of you have heard of that. Even if you haven't been in church, you've heard of the law of sowing and reaping or sowing and reaping. This is a spiritual law that is woven. God has woven it into the natural order of things. I don't know if you know this about God, but God is, a, is, is an organized God. He is a God of order. He is not a God of chaos. He is a God of order. In fact, the more we look at the universe, the more we realize how orderly God is. Did you know that the earth is sitting on its axis in such a way that if it was one degree one way, the earth would burn up? If it was one degree the other way, the earth would freeze up. The earth is at the exact angle the axis to sustain human life god has established the universe around certain natural and physical 
our physical or natural laws and listen spiritual laws there are spiritual laws in operation that god has established and there are also natural or physical laws that he's so we understand the laws of physics like we get that they study that the laws of chemistry the laws of mass mathematics i mean but there are also spiritual laws okay now in order to understand that that the laws of nature or the natural laws we have to look to god's creation to the natural things in order to understand god's spiritual laws we need to look at the word of god that's where it contains the spiritual laws. Um, here's the first verse in your outline. Proverbs chapter 11, verse 18. The first verse that we have an example of the law of sowing and reaping today. Let me share it with you. It says that the wicked man earns deceptive wages, but he who sows generously will be certain to reap a reward. Remember, I want to underline our circle. Sow and reap because you can do it dishonestly. Or you can do it honestly, he says. And, and look, the, the kind of life that you're going to live, please listen, the kind of life that you are going to live is entirely up to you by the seeds that you sow into it. The seeds that you sow into the life will be the life that comes back to you. This is, this is the, the principle, the law of sowing and, and reaping. Today, we're going to learn this law. What I'm calling as well the, the, the seven laws of harvest. The seven laws, now look, these are laws that we, that we understand and we, we, we get from the word of God. And when you can understand these laws and work with, within these laws and have them work for you, I'm telling you, you're going to fully benefit from them. It's, it's like, you know what, if you didn't understand the law of gravity, how many of you know gravity will kick you in the rear, okay? If you didn't understand the law of gravity, then the, gravi the law of gravity will hurt you. I'm hoping that open your eyes to some things, some spiritual laws to increase your understanding so you can make it work for you today the laws of harvest how many how many of you want a harvest huh anyone want a harvest look and this is actually what i'm going to teach you today is a principle that applies not just to your money what we're going to look at today the seven laws we're going to look at applies to every area of your life it applies to your relationships it applies to your time your words your talents your energy all the areas of your life the, the seven laws apply to every area so look if you want to experience a harvest in your career, a harvest in your finances, a harvest of love, a harvest of forgiveness, a harvest of, if you want to experience a harvest in your life, then you need to learn the laws of harvest. All right, here they are. I'm going to give them to you in a, in a progression kind of way. I'm, I'm kind of burning up back here. If you can help me out with some AC, I would love it. Um, you, and I don't know if I'm just on fire or what, but it's, all right, here they are. I'm going to give it to you in a progression, okay, because here's number one. Everything starts as a seed. Very important for you to understand this, that everything starts as a seed. Everything in life starts as a seed. Every idea, every dream, every, every achievement, every, every thought that you, even your very life, listen, your life started as a seed. And we understand that even in the natural, that truly it was a seed that, 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 that was started our life. But even before that, your life was a seed in the thought and mind of God. That, that before it ever became natural and physical, it was a seed of thought in the spiritual that everything in life starts as a seed. Now, everything, every, absolutely everything. God created the world around this principle. It's called the seed principle. And he established it. He established it when he first began the world in Genesis chapter 1. It shows up in your Bible, the seed principle. Look at this in Genesis chapter 1, verse 11. God's trying to call our attention to this. It says, God says, let the land have seed-bearing plants and trees that bear fruit with seed in it, according to their varieties. There's, there's an old saying that says, anybody can count the seeds in an apple, but only God knows the number of apples in the seed. That, that, that's, that's, what, what that means is that there's an exponential potential of the seed. So the seed has exponential potential. Potentially, you can take one seed and you plant it in the ground. You can get one large tree that will produce much fruit, and inside of every fruit is seeds, and then you plant those into the ground. Over the course of years, you could have hundreds and thousands of trees. You can have a forest that was started with one seed. That's the power. Listen, that's the power of a seed. And everything, and look, you need to understand that everything begins as a seed. You have a seed of an idea. 
You have a seed of a business. You have a seed of a ministry. You have a seed of a family or children. You, everything in life starts as a seed. And if you don't understand this principle and the exponential power that God has given you to steward, then you will not steward that seed correctly. You will, you will not steward those things that God has given you correctly in your life. You'll end up doing things with that seed that you weren't even ever intended to do with the seed. Even this church, you guys, began, this church began as a seed. And look what God has done, the exponential power of the seed that we're in Ventura and now planting churches. And, and now why? Because, because inside of this fruit is seed. And seeds that will bear seeds. And all over California, there's going to be discovery churches. And all over this nation, there's going to be discovery churches. Why? Because of the exponential power of the seed. You need to, you need to, you need to understand. If you, want, if you want to operate and invite God's ways into your life, then you need to understand the laws of harvest, okay? That everything that God has given you, every idea, every gift, the time that you have, the energy that you have, everything in life begins as a seed. You need to understand that. Because you're supposed to do something with a seed, aren't you? And that comes to number two. Number two, this second law says that nothing happens until the seed is planted. That's what you do with a seed. You, nothing happens in your life until the seed is planted. Uh, years ago, I bought some, some, uh, some fruit seeds uh, so to plant some fruit trees in my backyard. I just thought, man, it would be so nice to just go to my backyard and some, pick some fruit. That would be so nice. Man, I don't have a green thumb at all at all. I'm terrible. Years later, those, those seeds never bear fruit for me. And, and you know why? Because when I was going through my garage one day, I found them there. I said, oh, dang it, man. I forgot to... It's, it's, it, you, the seeds are worthless. Listen, the seeds that God has given you are worthless if you don't plant the seed. Seeds are meant to be planted. Imagine a farmer who is going out and he spent his life savings. He buys a bunch of seeds and he puts them in his barn and springtime comes. It's time for him to, to plant the seed and he's looking out at his barren field and then he begins to think, oh, I don't know if I should do this. I got all my savings wrapped up in this seed. What if I, if I plant the seed? Maybe I'm not gonna get, I'm not gonna get any, any harvest back. I mean, I mean, this is risky. You know what? I'm just gonna play it safe. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna hold on to the seed and be safe. Wouldn't that be foolish? Isn't that foolish? That's like, what are you thinking? See, we understand the concept in the, in the natural that that is foolishness, but there are so many dreams that are left on the table of God that are left, so many businesses and ministries and groups and, and things that God, that, that God has given you, but you've never planted the seed. Never planted the seed. Yeah, I hope you catch this today. Some of you are waiting on God. You think you're waiting on God. You're waiting on God for that job. You're waiting on God for that relationship. You're waiting on God for that leadership. You're waiting on God for that promotion or that provision. And, and God is going, what do you mean? You're waiting on me? I'm waiting on you. I'm just, I'm waiting on you. I gave you the seed. Will you just already plant it? Will you just plant the seed? Put it in the ground. It's not going to happen until you plant some seed. Everything in life. Everything in life starts as a seed. A relationship, every marriage, business, church, Everything starts as a seed and nothing happens until the seed is planted. Why is that? What, why is God doing that? You want to know why? Because planting the seed is an act of faith that gives glory to God. Planting a seed is an act of faith. It's, it's where I let go of it. I release it. I, I, I give it away. I bury it. I plant it. And I say, God, I'm trusting in you for the harvest. God, I'm, I'm letting it go. It's yours. God says that planting is an act of faith. That gives glory to God. Jesus, he explained this principle when he, when he was trying to explain to his disciples why he came to earth to die. Like he had to come to die. He had to, bear, he had to be buried in order to get the harvest that God sent him to get. That there was, he's just trying to explain this and he uses this law of sowing and reaping in John chapter 12, verse 24. Jesus says, unless a grain of wheat is buried in the ground, it cannot reproduce. Oh, I wish I had some time to continue in that thought. But if he says, if it dies, like if that seed, it needs to die first. It needs to be buried first. It will produce much fruit. Millions of people will get saved and get to go to heaven because of my death and my burial. He said, I'm going to plant a seed and the seed is going to be my life. And some of you think that you're getting buried by life. Can I give you some a re revelation today? 
that you're not being buried, you're being planted. Okay, you think, you're, you think you're getting broken, but and that brokenness is a bad thing. Actually, every seed needs to be broken before it yields fruit. Okay, you're, 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 there is a process that takes place. There is, there is a process, and just because, you know, the process of the seed is becoming a harvest, if you invite God's ways into your life, I'm telling you, you will bear fruit. Nothing happens until a seed is planted. Here's the principle that whenever I have a need, I sow a seed. That's the principle of sowing and reaping. Whenever I have a need, I plant a seed. And I don't know what you need today. I don't know if you need more time, if you need more energy, if you need more wisdom, if you need more friends, if you need more finances, if you need more creativity, whatever, it is, whatever you need more of, you plant a seed. This is the principle of sowing and reaping. Here's the third law of, har- the third law of harvest, and that is whatever I sow is what I reap. Whatever I sow, whatever I put into the ground is what I'm going to reap. And this is the law of reproduction. And I know these, every one of these laws are so obvious. Like they're, they're simple. They're simple laws. And, and, and although it's maybe glaringly obvious and is the principle sounds, you'd be surprised at how many people I've observed people expecting things to work other ways in their case. Like, like can you imagine a farmer standing in a field in which he'd sown seeds and, and, and like he's sown some wheat seeds and he's being frustrated that corn is not appearing. Imagine that. Like, like, what, like oh God, what the heck is going on here, man? I just, isn't, that, isn't that foolish that, that a farmer would? And that's precisely what so many believers do. They expect a harvest of something that they have never planted. You expect something out of life that you have never given it. You expect something out of your relationships that you've never given to your relationships. You expect something out of love that you've never sown into love. You expect something out of your career that you've never sown into your career. It's the law of sowing and reaping. It's the laws of harvest that are in operation. Although it seems obvious, it amazes me how many people don't understand this, this principle and apply it in their life. And, it's, and it applies to every area, but it does also apply in the area of your finances. I kind of want to emphasize here, though, that this is not a holy, get-rich-quick scheme kind of thing. We, or, we don't sow for the purpose of more money, but listen, all financial growth is a byproduct of bountiful sowing. Every, it, all financial growth is a byproduct of bountiful slowing. If a farmer uh, goes out and he plants beans, he's not going to expect candy canes. That's not going to happen. He's not going to expect that. He, 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 he's going to get beans. Whatever you plant is whatever you get back. He doesn't doubt it. He doesn't question it. He just knows whatever I sow, I'm going to reap. And this applies to every single area of your life. And listen, because some of you, listen, some of you have planted pumpkin seeds and you're expecting watermelons. You're, you're, you're expecting something sweet, but you've only planted in bitterness. I mean, God is good. I mean, he gives us what we don't deserve all the time. He he gives us grace and mercy and acceptance. I mean, because that's the kind of God we serve. But please listen and understand this. There is a law in operation here. He has established it. It's the laws of harvest. You will reap whatever you sow. There's a phrase that's often repeated in the book of Genesis over and over again. You'll see it repeated. God says, each is to reproduce according to its kind. You've seen that? Each is to reproduce according to its kind. Why? Because in God's economy, we reproduce after our own kind. And that can work for you positively, and it can work for you negatively. Galatians chapter 6, verse 7 says this. He says, do not deceive yourselves. Like, don't try to convince yourself otherwise. You haven't planted that. Why do you think you're going to harvest that? Don't try to fool yourself. Don't think you're going to get what you have not sown in. Don't deceive yourselves. And by the way, don't try to fool God. You're not fooling God here. You, know, you think you can plant pumpkin seeds and get watermelons. You're not fooling God. You, can't, you want to cut corners and, and, and get around it. You're not pulling the wool over God's eyes. The law of harvest is in operation. Try to do that with the law of gravity, by the way. Just try to do that. Try to pull the wool over God's eyes with the law of gravity. It ain't going to work because it's in operation. It's going to take effect. The same thing with the law of sowing and reaping, the law of harvest, because it says you will reap what? exactly what you sow, what you plant. You will reap exactly. He's saying that whatever I dish out in life is what I'm going to get back. You guys have heard this saying, what goes around comes around, right? What goes around comes around. It means like 
if I, if, I'm, if I sow kindness into other people all the time, guess what? People are going to be kind to me. If I sow forgiveness into other people while I'm easy going, I let people off the hook really easy, and I'm a forgiving person, guess what? People are going to be forgiving to me. If I'm generous with other people, people are going to be generous with me because whatever I sow, I'm going to reap. You see, the same is true in the negative sense, though, as well. If I go out and I'm just angry at people all the time, I'm just an angry person, guess what? People are always going to be angry at me. If I'm critical with people all the time, guess what? People are going to always criticize me. If I'm judgmental, people are going to judge me. If I cheat people, people are going to cheat me. If I gossip about people, guess what? People are going to gossip about me. Let me give you a little hint with this one, you guys. Anybody who's willing to talk to you about somebody else is going to talk about you as well. You can count on it. You can count on it, okay? And this is not karma. It's the law of harvest, all right? Get your religion straight, okay? Get your, this is not karma. This is the law of harvest that God has established. All right, here's number four, the fourth law of harvest, and that is that I always reap in different seasons from when I sow. I always reap in different seasons than when I sow. And once again, I know this seems like mind-numbingly simple, but you cannot believe how many people say things like, someday when I have money, I'm going to be a giver. No, you won't. No, you will not. You won't. You won't. It'll never happen. Why? Because you can't reap before you sow. Oh, come on, somebody. I'm preaching so much better than you guys are responding right now. You cannot, you cannot, you understand in the natural, you understand you cannot reap before you sow. You cannot in the spiritual and everything, you cannot reap before you sow. I need to sow first in order to reap. Uh, this is a principle, once again, of God that is woven into the natural order of things. There's a time delay from when I make the effort, from when I make the, the deposit of the seed, of the energy of my finances to when I see the fruit of my effort. There's always a time delay, and this is a frustrating thing sometimes. It's, it's to, that waiting period, that delay period, it's, it's, it's difficult, but, but the, there is a time delay between from where I am now and where I want to be, from where the, the, I sow and when I reap. And, and why? Because it's the law of harvest, not the law of the microwave, okay? And, and, on, that's, and, and some of you are trying to, you're trying to live life by the law of of the microwave, and there's no instant maturity. There's no instantaneous leadership. There's no instantaneous rich. That doesn't happen, okay? You can try to operate by the law of microwave, but it's, it's, you're, not gonna, you're not gonna have the full benefit and blessing of God, okay? See, the, the law of harvest says that there's a season I sow, and there's a season that I reap. No farmer goes out and plants the seed in the ground and comes back an hour later, digs it up, and goes, hey, are you ready? Have you grown yet? No, you got to leave it in there. You got to let it grow. You got to walk away, let it do its thing. Ecclesiastes 3 and 1 talks about the seasons of, of life. It says, There is a time for everything and a season for every activity. He says, For every activity under heaven, a time to plant and a time to harvest. There's a time to sow the seed, and there's a different season where I'm going to harvest the seed. And I need, I need, I need to. There's, while I'm waiting, God is working. There's, there, I, there's a time to plant, and there's a time to harvest, a time to scatter, and a time to gather. Fruit ripens slowly. Fruit ripens slowly. And just because you start practicing God's money management principles during this series doesn't mean you're going to go win the lottery. Okay? That's not going to happen. No, it's, it's going to come over time. It's going to ripen a little bit over time. It never ceases to amaze me, though, how many people think that God is a slot machine. You know, I put in a little bit of tithe. Now I can get whatever I want. You know, now I can just, you know, it's supposed to come back. Like, like hey, I put some, uh, put some money in the offering plate. And, and now, you know, I thought I was going to get that $100,000 job when I applied for it. It didn't happen, God. What happened? No, it happens slowly. It's, 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 it's a slow process. That's why in Zechariah, God says, God tells Zechariah in 4 verse 10, chapter 4 verse 10, he says, don't despise the day of small beginnings. Why? Because everything starts as a seed. Everything starts as small. And God, you, you need to be faithful with the small seed instead of, you know, in order to get the much harvest. And that's, that's kind of a challenge because some of us have actually seen God has given you a picture of the harvest. God gave you, like he gave you a dream, gave you an idea, gave you creativity, gave you a ministry, whatever it was. And, and it's so hard because, because man, I, I'm, I'm here, but I'd rather be there already. 
I'd rather be there. And so what God, what God is seeing is if, if you can be faithful in the small things, man. If you, how, you want to be a pastor, but you can't even lead a group. Okay? You want to have, you want to have a, a, a business, but you can't even be an employee, a good employee. You want to, you want to, God, you need to be faithful in the small things in order to produce the much things. There is a delay here, and that delay, you need to be faithful. God, God is working while you're waiting. And it's so, because we can't see it because it's underneath the surface. Underneath the surface, that seed is, is, is doing something. It's taking root. It's, it's, it's grabbing the dirt. It's, it's, it's going to be able now to withstand the height and the weight of that dream, of that ministry, of that church, of that idea, that seed that God has given you. It needs to first take root. Listen, some of you, some of you think that, that that process is not happening, but listen, I, I guarantee your faith is working. Just because you can't see the process doesn't mean that God is not working underneath the surface behind the scene and while it's hidden god is slowly germinating and one day that seed is going to burst in new life in jesus name how many receive that today amen so we have number four i always reap in different seasons that i sow here's number five i always reap more than i sow i always reap more than i sow this is always true for good or bad positive negative in your life you will always reap more than you sow, this is the law of, and the principle of multiplication. Jesus talks about it in Mark chapter 4, verse 8. He says, some seed fell on the good soil. It came up, grew, and produced a crop, multiplying. Man, the exponential potential of the seed, multiplying 30, 60, and even 100 times. You plant one seed, and you get seed-bearing fruit with seed in it. So if you think that, you know, you go, and this, this is both positive and negative, because if you think that you're going to go and do one gossip about somebody, and you're going to get one gossip back, you are kidding yourself. You've now, you now put yourself in the gossip chain. That's what happens, okay? And, and I promise you, you will reap back, you know, got more gossip than you will ever sow out. It, it, this, is, this is true in every area of your life. That's why I never attack my attackers. I never, I never hate on the haters. And anytime you have a growing business, a good a growing church, you're doing things that are great, you're going to get haters, okay? And I never, I never attack the, the people who are attacking at me or attacking Discovery Church. Why? Because I don't want to get put in the chain. I don't want to get put in that chain. I'm going to take care of my field. I'm, I'm going to respond with blessing. I'm going to bless you. I'm going to pray for you. I'm going to speak well of you. Why? Because Jesus actually says, the Bible says that we are to pray for those who persecute us, to bless those who persecute us. Why? Because I want blessing back. I want love back. I want grace back. Man, just because you're hating on me, I'm not gonna, you're not going to cause me to sow hate into my field. No, 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 no. I'm going to sow the right fruit into my field. And you know what? I don't even need to defend myself because the law of harvest will take effect. That's okay. You just keep planting those seeds. I'm going to plant these seeds right here, and we'll see the law of harvest will take effect. You have your harvest. I got my harvest. I'm going to continue to love you, bless you, speak well of you. You're not going to rob my harvest. Come on, somebody. This is, you, you got to understand that everything starts as a seed. Everything in your life, every word that you speak has the power of life and death. Every action, every thought, every idea, the energy, everything is a seed. And it's so important to point out here that Jesus recognizes that your seed, it bears fruit, listen, only in good soil. Only in good soil will it bear good fruit. So, so it's, it's, it's important, you guys, don't just plant the right seeds, but plant the right seed in the right soil, right? And Jesus taught us that the best soil is the kingdom of heaven. He said, seek first the kingdom of heaven, and all these things will be added unto you a lot of you have the right seed you got the right seed but you're planting those seeds in the wrong soil like you want so badly for your kids to be model citizens and godly kids and god do you know that children are seeds of god they're gifts of god they're seeds of your uh, of your of your life that's what that's what they are and some of you got the seed and you're like i want to do good with the seed of these kids so i'm going to put them in classes and i'm going to put them in that school and i'm going to give them these the, the piano lessons or the guitar lessons and then i'm going to put them in sports and by the way they're going to go to year-round sports and i'm going to plant them because of, and you know what you're going to reap a harvest you are they're going to be they're going to be they're going to know teamwork and sportsmanship and they're going to know no musicals 
talents and it's going to work really well with their mind and make them a little more creative. You're going to reap a harvest, but, but could it be that you are forgetting the most important soil that there ever is? The kingdom. Of, look, what you really need to do is to plant those kids. Please, listen. you need to plant those kids in the kingdom of heaven. All right, you're, you, you cannot benefit from the fruit of heaven, harvest of spiritual things unless you're depositing into spiritual things. And maybe, just maybe it is that you're, you're your, your kids are acting the way they're acting because you're not planting them in the right soil. All right, I, I didn't mean to slap you in the face with that one, but I don't know who that was for. But I'm, and so this, it's everywhere. Like you're sowing your finances, you have savings accounts, you have investment accounts, maybe, and you're reaping some benefits from that. But there is a better soil that, re, re, that will produce eternal results. Um, in order to have the most return, you need to have the right soil, the right accounts. I'm telling you, God's way works. So you say, I'm waiting for the right man. I'm waiting for the right woman. Well, where are you sowing in your relationships for that right man and right woman? I'm telling you, the best soil to sow into for, that, for your boo is the church, okay? That's the best place to find your boo is the church of God. I'm telling you. We need to hit some of you up, man. I'm, I'm doing a wedding. I'm doing a wedding to this, after, this, this afternoon. It's a discovery wedding. It's, it's another one January. There's another January discovery wedding coming up, man. And and I'm trying to help you single people out, okay? Because you guys are burning with lust. I'm trying to, trying to get you guys right with Jesus, okay? I'm sorry, but here's number six. Number six, the laws of harvest. Here it is, number six. I can increase my harvest by planting more seed. You want more harvest? You want, you want to experience that exponential? Well, you can increase your harvest by planting more seed. This is the law of of proportion that we always reap in proportion to what we sow. So if I sow a bunch of seed, I'm going to get a bunch of crop. If I sow a little seed, I'm going to get a little crop. If I sow no seed, I'm going to get no crop. And this is true of giving. This is true of tithing. It's true of your energy. It's true of your talent, of your intelligence in every year of your life that I can increase my harvest by planting more seed. You see, we naturally want to consume all of our harvest. That's what we want to do. But what if, what if I just like didn't consume it all for myself, but I invested more seed into the soil. Well, what if, what if as, I, as you brought in the harvest that God has given to you, that you didn't just increase your standard of living, you increased your standard of giving as well. I'm telling you, your field would grow. You would be planting more seeds and more seeds. That's what 2 Corinthians chapter 9 actually says. He says, remember this. Like, don't forget this. You guys know it. Remember it. Whoever sows sparingly will also reap sparingly. But whoever sows generously will also reap generously. Each one should give what he's decided in his heart to give, not reluctantly or under compulsion. For God loves a cheerful giver. You know what this verse is basically saying? This verse is saying, you can't outgive God. You cannot outgive God. So God, God says, hey, let's play a game. That's what he's saying. Let's, let's play a game. You do your best. You give your best. Give me the best of your energy. Give me the best of your gifts. Give me the best of your time. Give me, give me your best. And I'll tell you what, I'll give you my best. And let's see who wins. I'm telling you, you cannot outgive God. I've been trying to play that game for years now. And I'm telling you, God, I'm seeing the, the multiplication effect of God's blessing and favor and provision. And no, I don't got like, like yachts and stuff like that. But I'm telling you, I'm walking in. I promise you, the blessing in the favor of God. I love the message paraphrase of Proverbs chapter 11. He says that the world of the generous gets larger and larger. Like, like, like if, I just, I, if I just sow more seed into the soil, man, my field will get bigger. It's going to get larger and larger. But the world of the stingy gets smaller and smaller. Okay, and, and actually the statistics tell us that this is true of Americans, that the more Americans make, that the more stingy they get. That's, that's statistically true. Well, you want to increase your harvest? You want to multiply that harvest? Stop consuming all the seed and increasing your standard of living. Invest more of that seed into the soil and increase your standard of giving. Okay? That's, this, is, this is the law of harvest, you guys, that you can increase your harvest by planting more seed. All right, here's the last one. Number seven. I must be patient and not give up. Oh, this is important, you guys. In order to have and walk in the law of harvest. I must be patient. Why? Because remember, there's a delay. There's always a delay between sowing and reaping. You plant one season, you harvest in another. But this is a kingdom principle 
It, this is one of the principles that the kingdom of God operates on. Here's, here's, here's your declaration today, Galatians chapter 6, verse 9. This is, I want you to make this your declaration, and it has a promise with it as well. Galatians chapter 6, verse 9 says this. He says, we must not become weary or tired of doing good. And you see, some of, some of us here, we're, we're tired. We're just tired of working. We're tired of sewing. We're tired of trying we're, we're tired of working on that marriage. You're tired of working on that relationship. You're tired of, 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 of and, and you know why? Because sowing is hard, farming is hard work. Sowing seeds, is, it is, it's, it takes work, it takes effort, it takes energy. But here's the, the encouragement today that I believe God wants to give us is that we must not become tired of doing good because we will, see the faith there, we will reap a harvest. It takes faith to practice this principle of sowing and reaping. We will reap a harvest. I may not see it, God, but I'm trusting in you. I'm not going to grow tired. I will reap a harvest at the right time. There is a harvest time that's coming. I don't know when it is, but God, while I'm waiting, I know that you're working. I know that you're germinating it. You're setting it up, God. He says, we're going to reap a harvest at the right time if we do not give up. See, this is the only requirement of sowing and reaping. Once you've planted the seed, you will reap according to what you have sown in this life if you just don't walk away and abort your seed. You'll reap it. It'll, it'll happen if you just don't grow weary, if you don't grow tired, and you don't give up. You know, the, the law of harvest is an operation, and today there are dreams, there are ministries, there are ideas, there are businesses. There is so much seed in this house today that God has, everything that God has given you is a seed with exponential potential. Come on, let's bow our heads with that in our mind.